Welcome to Helpline Extra, where we take a deeper dive into the topics that we see come up time and again on our regular Helpline show. I am joined by Chris Minogue, our mothercraft expert. She has over 30 years experience helping families with their babies and small children. So there's not many topics that she hasn't seen. Um, before we do start this deep dive, I just want to preface our conversation with the fact that this is not intended to take the place of professional medical advice. If you have any concerns along those lines, please make sure you take your baby or child to see your GP. Chris, our topic for today is how do you start good sleep practices for a newborn? Perfect. Yes, it's a hard one. Uh, can babies be taught how to sleep? Yes, and babies need to be taught how to sleep. I think the definition is the baby. So we've got a newborn, we've got a young baby, and then we have sort of that six to 12 month window. But basically all children at some point will need to be taught how to sleep well. Okay. So is there an age that they're ready to take those lessons on board? Or are you staggering I think, them? Or? I think what we do is we teach the teacher. So we're teaching the parents the very early steps of how to initiate sleep in a baby. So we look at the very, very newborn. So in the first couple of weeks of their life, in the first, I would say, under six weeks of their life, pretty much if you cuddle a little baby, they will fall asleep. And that is the start of understanding sleep. The parents learn when the baby's tired, those whingy signs, those um, sort of subtle signs in a very newborn um, that says, I need help to go to sleep. And the most common thing that we do is we tend to wrap them or swaddle them and keep them close. And that's our first step of saying, okay, this behaviour is about going to sleep. And then the second thing we do is we tend to put them down in a bed if we choose to be the people that put our children into bed. So we know we have co-sleepers, we have bassinets, cots, and we have bed sharing. So we're teaching our baby, you'll get comfort, then you'll go down to sleep. Okay. Um, and how would you define good sleep practices? What does that okay. look like? So in the young baby, a good sleep practice if to, from a parent to a child is about understanding when their child is tired and ready for sleep and then creating the environment to enable the child to sleep. So they might have been actively playing on the floor and there's good interaction, then suddenly the baby disconnects by turning its head so it might just start looking away from the parent or from the toys that might be in front of them. They start to get a little bit whingy, where they were calm and relaxed before. And then the parent says, OK, well, this is reasonable behaviour that the baby's tired. So I pick them up, change them and check them so they're comfortable, then wrap, cuddle, then change the environment so that the baby's inducive to sleep. So I might calm the environment down, pull down the blind, dim the room, not darken the room, but just dim the room, put them where I want them to go to sleep, so maybe in a bassinet or a cot, and then I give them some comfort, a little bit of shushing, a little bit of patting, make it conducive to going to sleep. Okay. Are there any bad habits? That's a horrible way to put it, but, you know, some parents worry that they're getting into bad, bad habits. habits. Um, do you define it that way or do you simply look at trying to set some good boundaries into place? Yeah. So anything can become a bad habit. So if we look at the general things that people sort of put into that basket, such as feeding to sleep, dummies, excessive rocking, excessive patting, sleeping in beds, to one family that might be all they need to get a good night's sleep. So, you know, those tired parents who pull that toddler into their bed and they all sleep happily ever after for the next six hours, that's not a bad habit in that family. Mm -hmm. The mum that gets up and nurtures her baby by, you know, giving it a quick feed and putting it down to bed, that's not a bad habit until it's not working. Right. And that's the key. So if I get up once a night to put a dummy in and I'm okay about getting up once a night to put a dummy in, that's not a bad habit in my family. But for the parents who are struggling and getting up 20 times to put a dummy in, that then becomes a difficult behaviour that they may choose to change. So I think it's a really hard thing to put a bad habit mm. onto it. It's a behaviour that is not working for the family, enabling that child to sleep. That's what becomes the difficult behaviour. 
So when a baby is very small, are there some simple steps that parents can start in the first weeks that will set them up for later? Oh, down absolutely. The track? I call them the stepping stones to sleep. And so these stepping stones are those really basic nurturing things. So I've got my young baby, I've fed them, I've cuddled them. Then typically in those very, very early um, weeks, like the first four or five weeks of bringing the baby home, we tend to wrap them and cuddle them. But then the key is to put them down where you want them to sleep. So we put them down in where we want them to sleep. We make them feel secure. So sometimes we tuck in, draw blinds, change the environment. Then... If they cry out, a little bit of rocking and patting, but if that crying's just increasing, I go back to picking them up, giving them a cuddle, calming them right down and then putting them back in their bed. And that takes time and patience. Remember, it's a learning skill for not only the baby but also for the parents. So it's a little bit of push and shove to find that right method that works for that family to help that baby go to sleep and get good sleep practices. Chris, thank you so much for your advice today. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm Siobhan Hunt. See you next time.